Let me remind you again what we are doing. So, we are doing ground state perturbation theory. So, it essentially means that this is the ground state of the Hamiltonian, physical Hamiltonian. So, we are looking at exact ground state and we are trying to find out how the exact ground state energy can be approximated by perturbation theory. So, that is what is called the ground state perturbation theory. So, we had uh, very quick quickly I will just give you the formula. We had partitioned H as H naught plus V, where eigenfunction solutions of H naught were known. Right? So, whenever I am writing superscript 0, it means they are the solutions of H naught and I is the different states. So, of course, I is 0, 1, 2, 3, etcetera. So, the E00 is the lowest energy. So, I can write E00, sorry, E less than equal to E10, etcetera. So, this is an order. Then, what we said is that the correction to the ground states at the first order. So, every time I am writing the superscript, remember superscript is the order and the subscript is the ground or excited states. So, when I am writing psi 0 1, so that means there is a first order correction to the ground state. E 0 1 is the first order correction to the ground state etcetera. So, my actual E 0 will be E 0 0 plus E 0 1 plus E 0 2 etcetera right and the same thing goes for psi 0. Okay. So, this is of course known. So, these are the things that we have to find out. So, we already know that E01, what is the formula? You take psi 0, 0, which is the ground state eigenfunction of H0 from here, and then take the average value of V with respect to the psi 0, 0. So, that is your E01. So, that is a formula which we did quite some time back, okay. And then in the last class, we also wrote down the equation for the second order. And from there we found that in the same manner you can calculate E02 as psi 0, 0 V psi 0, 1. Second order correction we cannot still get because we need to know what is psi 0, 1. So far we have not done told you how to calculate the wave function corrections. So psi 0, 1 is something that we have to evaluate, psi 0, 0 is known. Remember, psi 0, 1 is not known because the eigenfunctions of H0, psi 0, 0, etc., Hartree Fock and determinants and so on. So, psi 0, 1 is something that we have to find out. To do that, I also remind you the two equations that we wrote. One is first order perturbation equation. So, this into psi 0, 1. So, this is the thing that we have to find out plus V minus E 0, 1 psi 0, 0 equal to 0. Remember, this is the first order equation. I hope all of you can write it. It is the first order perturb Schrodinger equation H minus E psi equal to 0, okay. So, and the second order equation was similarly H naught minus E 0, 0 psi 0, 2 plus V minus E 0, 1 psi 0, 1 minus E 0, 2 psi 0, 0 equal to 0. Right. So, these are the two equations that we had written in the last time and we told you that each of this equation, if I project with psi 0, 0 star and integrate, then from this equation I get this, from this equation I will get this because this term becomes 0. So, you directly get E 0 1 equal to psi 0 0 V psi 0 0. Similarly, here this term is 0, then you have psi 0 0 V psi 0 1 and E naught 1 into psi 0 0 psi 0 1 that is 0 because of intermediate normalization. So, that is equal to E naught 2. So, each of these equations have been obtained by projection 
So, you project these equations to psi 0 0 star and integrate, multiply and integrate. So, you get these two equations. We are also explicitly working with intermediate normalization. That means, all ground state corrections is are orthogonal to the 0th order state for all k 1, 2, 3, etcetera. Corrections, only corrections of course. So, that is why that is why this term psi 0, 0, psi 0, 1 becomes 0. So, you have only psi 0, 0, v psi 0, 1 which is equal to enough 2 when I multiply and integrate. So, this is this is something that we have done so far till the last class. So, I want to remind you. Now, our task will be to evaluate psi 0, 1, okay. So, we have written an expression of E naught 2, but this expression is not useful unless I know this. Because so far, I do not know how to get the first order correction to the web function. We are only talking of correction to the energy. However, I have an equation which involves psi 0, 1. So, I have to use this equation to obtain the actually psi 0, 1. Okay. This was not used before because I only multiplied with psi 0, 0 star and if I multiply with psi 0, 0 star this becomes 0. So, regardless of this the integral is 0. So, I did not need to know psi 0, 1 to get E naught 1. Okay. So, now this is what we will do today. All right. So, I will leave those equations here. Note that my eigenstates of H naught are completely known. So, that is something that I want to remind you that H naught is an Hamiltonian whose eigenfunctions are completely known. Please be comfortable with the notations, okay. So, whenever I am writing superscript 0, I remind you their eigenstates of H naught, they are completely known and these i is a different state. So, i equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. In our case, when i equal to 0, what is psi 0, 0? That is Hartree Fock wave function, right. I just remind you when H naught is sum of the Fock operator, psi 0, 0 was Hartree Fock, but we have to now improve the Hartree Fock. All determinants, MCN determinants are eigenstates of H naught. So, they belong to this space of psi i 0. I am writing the equation generally, but I am just throwing you back to Hartree Fock perturbations that all singly excited, doubly excited, etcetera determinants were eigenstates of H naught. So, this is something that I fully know. I know complete eigenstate of H naught in a basis, okay. But let us not worry about, worry about that right now. So, I have the entire spectrum, eigenvalue spectrum that is completely known. I am now going to evaluate psi 0 1, right. When I evaluate psi 0 1 which is a ground state correction, I first note the intermediate normalization. The intermediate normalization says that when k equal to 1, the psi 0 1 are orthogonal to psi 0 0, right. That means, if I expand psi 0 1 in terms of these states which are complete state set of functions, I must ensure that the psi 0 1 does not include psi 0 0 because it is orthogonal. I hope you realize what is orthogonal. The coefficient comes as an overlap. Since it is orthogonal, the coefficient must be 0. So, obviously, if I expand psi 0 1 and this is something that we will do, we will expand psi 0 1 as a linear combination of all psi 0 k, okay, with a linear combination coefficient c k. I will call this c k 1. Since all these psi k, psi k zeros are known, I can expand psi 0 1 as a linear combination of all psi k 0 except k not equal to 0. Why k not equal to 0? Because I have to enforce the intermediate normalization. So, because psi 0 1 is orthogonal to psi 0 0, I can expand except k not equal to 0. Is it clear? So, for example, when I do Hartree Fock perturbation, my first order correction to the web function will not include Hartree Fock itself but in, it will include all other excited determinants. So, I am writing in a general way, okay, because it is supposed to be orthogonal to Hartree Fock. 
that is the intermediate normalization means. So, I first write this expansion in a general form, again I am writing the perturbation first in a general form, then we will put the Hartree-Fock perturbation theory. So, what I have to evaluate now is this coefficients. So, provided I know these coefficients, I know the first order correction because it is a linear combination of these determinants, okay. So, what are the coefficients? These coefficients, if you note, can be written formally as psi k 0, psi 0 1. I hope all of you agree because this is, these are all orthonormal states. So, the way to get the coefficients is to project psi 0 1 with one of the psi k 0. So, if I project with psi k 0, I make an expansion, it, they will all become orthonormal, orthogonal except when the expansion includes k only for that term it will survive, okay. So, just to show you again, so if I have psi k 0, psi 0 1, I expand the right hand side by a summation over L, psi L 0, C L 1. Note that this one means it is a first order correction, okay. This k is of course this, this k. So, I am just using instead of k a dummy variable L, okay. So, L not equal to 0. So, it is very clear that these are orthonormal, there is a delta k L. So, this result is only C k 1. So, only when L becomes equal to k, this survives, this becomes 1 and this becomes C k 1. So, this is again usual quantum mechanics that the C k 1 can be given as psi k 0, psi 0 1. So, if I can find this quantity, then I know the coefficient of expansion and I know the entire psi 0 1. K will be all the states of H naught except K not equal to 0, right. I am, I am taking these are my states which are coming here. These are the eigenstates of H naught. So, I all eigenstates of H naught have superscript 0 and subscript is K. So, k 0, k 0 means it is a ground state of H naught, okay. So, I am using all states of H naught except the ground state of H naught. Huh. So, wha wha how did you want to write this? Psi k here, that is kth order correction, which I do not know. What are the, what are this, what are the things that I know? I know this, right. I, I, what are available me, with me are all eigenstates of H naught. All eigenstates of H naught are written in this manner. That is what I have, we have decided and that is a simple, right? Huh. That is an assume, assumption, intermediate normalization. That is an assumption. That is an assumption. I already said that the normalization is my choice. And I explained in last class that if I do intermediate normalization, the full function will not be normalized, but that I can renormalize later. Right now it is my choice, okay. Is it clear? Any other question? So, we want to evaluate this. I am going to go back to the first order equation and try to evaluate this. Remember, initially I projected to psi 0, 0. Okay, the ground state of H naught only, which is the Hartree Fock. Now, what I am going to do to evaluate this, I am going to project to all other psi k 0. So, for example, I take this equation, I multiply by psi k 0 star and integrate. So, what I will get? Psi k 0, H naught minus E naught 0, psi 0 1 plus psi k 0. So, V minus E 0 1 psi 0 0 equal to 0, right. So, I have taken this equation, first order perturbed equation and multiplied instead of psi 0 0 star with psi k 0 star. So, all other eigenstates of H naught which are known. So, one by one I am going to do for each k, okay. So, remember when I did psi 0 0 this guy became 0. But now if you see carefully, it will not become 0. 
because psi k0 is an eigen function of h0 but the eigen value is ek0 not e0 0 so this will not become 0 so can you find out what it this will become this will now become ek0 minus e0 0 yes e0 0 into psi k0 psi 0 1 I hope you can see this because this is an eigen function of h0 with an eigen value ek0 which is a real number. So when I take complex conjugate this ik0 becomes conjugate no doubt and this number is real so it just becomes ek0 psi k0 minus e0 0 so that comes out and psi k0 psi 0 1 remains here okay. So I hope this small uh, thing all of you, can, you are able to do. And as he rightly said, this is what this is my target quantity. This is CK1. CK1 is exactly the projection of the first order wave function to the kth state of H0. Okay. So that is my target quantity. So we will try to find this out. But let me complete this equation. So then you have psi k0 V psi 0, 0. I'm right, I am breaking this up minus e0 1 psi k0 psi 0 0. Note that this I will do for all k not equal to 0 because I am not interested in k equal to 0 because my psi 0 1 does not contain psi 0 0 right. So I am only doing intermediate normalization okay. So this becomes my equation. Let me keep this here. So let me rewrite this equation again if you are not able to see. So first I am projecting the first order equation with psi k0 1 by 1. So psi k0 which is k0 equal to 0 then h0 minus e0 0 psi 0 1 plus psi k0 v minus e0 1 psi 0 0. Right. So that is my projected equation. So I just rewritten that equation. Whatever I wrote here, those who are not able to see from this side. Okay. Then I said this is nothing but ek zero <coughs> minus e zero zero psi k zero psi zero one plus psi k zero v psi 0 0 minus e not 1 okay so that becomes my equation now my target quantity is this this quantity is 0 because remember k not equal to 0 they are orthonormal because all the psi k zeros are eigenstates of H0 okay and they are since k is not equal to 0 they will be all orthogonal automatically to psi 0 0. So this this term really cancels out. So I can now find out what is CK1 remember I said CK1 is only this quantity right. So what is CK1 now so CK1 will be psi k0 v psi 0 0 divided by divided by e k 0 minus e 0 okay. So let me analyze this term now because this into c k 1 is equal to this quantity. So what we have essentially done is by projecting to the first order Schrodinger equation first with the psi 0 0 star which is the ground state of H0 we got an expression of E01 okay and same thing we did for here we got E02 
But now to calculate psi 0 1, we know that psi 0 1 can be written as a linear combination of all H naught states barring the ground state of H naught because we want psi 0 1 to be orthogonal to that as a part of the intermediate normalization, right? That psi 0 0 should not be included in psi 0 1. So we have expanded the psi 0 1 in terms of all states of H naught except k not equal to 0. The reason we are doing is that these are the states which are available to me, okay? You can of course argue that I could have expanded in any other complete set, but these are convenient set which is available to me, so I am expanding in this set. Then I notice that the CK1 is nothing but the overlap of this with psi k0. So if I can formally get this, then I am done. So to do that, I went back to this equation and projected with psi k0 and showed this equation or this equation from where I actually obtained CK1 as psi k0 0 V psi 0 0 divided by this. So let me write this what we have now got. So CK1 equal to psi k0 V psi 0 0 divided by E0 0 minus E k 0 okay. So each of these coefficient for psi k 0 can be obtained in a very simple manner. So what, you, what is the prescription? Everything is superscript 0. If you look at the formula, everything is known. So if I want to calculate what is the contribution of psi k 0 in the first order correction to the web function, first what I will do, I will take this perturbation matrix element between H0 eigenstate, ground state eigenstate with the kth eigenstate of H0, the kth one that I am trying to find out and divide by the corresponding energy denominator which is E0 0 minus EK0, keeping E0 0 as, as, as one from where it will be subtracted. Okay, so that is important to note. So this can be very easily calculated. Remember when I did E01, I had a similar matrix element but both were psi 0, 0 which is just an average value of V, right. Here I have actually a matrix element because the right and the left are different and in fact you know that if this is Hartree-Fock, these are determinants which are excited determinants like psi AR, psi ABRS and all that will come. And we can of course evaluate this by Slater rules, so that is something that we will do and divide by this energy difference, all these energies are also known, remember, okay. We have already done this, this is of course sum of the orbital energies, these are sum of the orbital energies plus minus the orbitals which are occupied in the kth state, okay. So anyway that is immaterial, for a general case anyway these are known, okay, yes because of the denominator, yeah, so what is asking? is that this also tells you a very interesting perturbation theory that you already know. For example, if I have a Hartree fog, then you expect the one determine one state whose energy is closest to the ground state of H0 to contribute more because if this is less, then this becomes more. So that is one of the reason they say the, the homo lumo gap if it is large then there is a larger excitation to lumo. So that is a very approximate idea, it just means that there is more contribution to that from that state, okay. However, there is a brillouin's theorem that you have to remember. So certain things will not happen because of brillouin's theorem. See, I, I had to, I could eliminate this. So it just simplifies. See, remember this term, this particular term. So anyway, I mean this terms will further come when you go for second order, third order and so on. There will be more and more such terms will come. That is, that is one of the reasons that I, because already psi 0, 0 is there, I need not include it. But please note that on normalization is anyway a choice, I have been repeating. Finally, my overall psi 0 is a linear combination of all states because Hartree-Fock is already included in psi 0, 0, so I need not include them in the correction term. So that is the physical reason why it is not necessary. But there is a mathematical reason which brings in simplicity. So that is what we are discussing, okay. Physically anyway it is not required because I am only looking at correction. 
my overall web function includes Hartree-Fock anyway, okay. And I can always renormalize at the end. So, this is also not a big problem. I can always renormalize. All right. So, so the prescription to do a perturbation theory, again I repeat that you first know all the H naught eigenstates. So, you can do it for simple case, even one particular case, harmonic oscillator everywhere. So, if you have harmonic oscillator, harmonic oscillator and which is perturbed quadratic function, which is perturbed by a cubic function, let us say x cube term, okay, in the potential, you can use that as a, that as a perturbation. So, how will you do it? Then all these size k 0, 0 and size 0, 0 will be harmonic oscillator eigenfunctions, right. One of them will be ground state eigenfunction, these are excited states, so harmonic oscillator. Take the v as x cube, I put up by x cube. So, calculate the matrix element of x cube between the different states, between the ground state of harmonic oscillator and all the excited states, divide by the energy difference, that will give you the coefficient for the first order correction to the energy. So, if I give you a problem that there is a harmonic oscillator which is completely known, one particle. So, you have half k x square which is completely known and now my v of x is half k x square plus some lambda x cube, okay, near, near about the, the, the uh, equilibrium. So, let us say this is a very small perturbation. Then what you will do is that up to V of x and kinetic energy your entire solutions are known. So, that becomes your H naught and this will become your V, okay. So, then what you can do is that you can apply this perturbation theory to first get the E naught 1. For E naught 1 it is very simple, your harmonic oscillator ground state eigenfunction and take lambda x cube, simply take the matrix element, average value, okay. For writing the first order correction, they are going to be combination of all harmonic oscillator eigenfunction, just as I have done it here. And each of these coefficients will be obtained by the matrix element of lambda x cube between ground state harmonic oscillator and excited states of harmonic oscillator. The harmonic oscillator means normal harmonic oscillator, H naught. That is what I have defined as H naught, divided by the energy difference. So, this is very simple. So, every state you simply calculate matrix element and take the energy difference. So, pictorially you can see in the following way, this is my E naught 0, this is psi 0 0. Then I have got E 1 0, psi 1 0, these are known, remember all zeros are known and so on, E 2 0 and psi 2 0. So, pictorially now I am trying to calculate psi naught 1, I know that the psi naught 1 should not contain this because this is already there in my psi naught 0. So, psi naught 1 should contain by the intermediate normalization these two states. Let us say I have only three bases just to give an example. So, how do I calculate the coefficient of each of the states in expansion? So, this is important. So, it means I just take the V, whatever is the V between these two states first which is psi 0 0 psi 1 0. So, that is your matrix element, then divide by the energy denominator, whatever is the denominator here. Then you take V between these two states, divide by the denominator. If there are more states, V from these three states and so on. Always from this state, you go to one state, up, take the matrix element of V, take divide by the energy denominator. An energy denominator must come in this form, that it is E 0 0 minus E k 0. Okay. So, you will get the combination coefficient and once you get the coefficient, you should be able to write psi naught 1. So, that is what we will do now, we will write psi naught 1. So, let me write psi naught 1 now as a linear combination of all eigenstates of H naught except psi 0 0, right. So, first you write sum over k naught equal to 0 and then write C k 1. So, I now have the CK1 which is psi K0, V psi 0, 0 divided by E0, 0, 0 minus EK0 into psi K0, correct. So, that is my coefficient multiplied by the H naught eigenstates. So, that becomes my psi naught 1. 
is it clear so this is the number because this is the matrix element of v divided by the energy difference everything is known here so you have to calculate one by one and then multiply of course by psi k0 so that becomes your combination coefficients so basically the whole purpose is i am trying to construct the first order perturbation correction to the wave function as a linear combination of what is already known what is already known is the eigen states of h0 so i am trying to construct the this function as a combination of the eigen states of h0 and i discover that the combination coefficient for each of the k can be written in this form so then i know and everything about psi 0 1 of course it's a long expression because it's a linear combination but in principle i can calculate in principle of course this summation over k will be will be limited by my knowledge of the eigen states of h0 because i told you i if i have m basis then my knowledge is limited because i have i can get only mcn determinants right so of course that is there but other than that this is an exact expression we are yet not yet doing Hartree-Fock perturbation here. Of course, now I will do Hartree-Fock, H0 as Hartree-Fock and then see what are these psi k's. We will do that. So, there is still a lot to do. Having done this, now I can go back to E0 2. Remember my E0 2, I had written down the expression psi 0 0 V psi 0 1. Do you remember? Like E0 1 was psi 0 0 V psi 0 0. Any E naught n I wrote was psi 0 0 v psi 0 n minus 1. So, for E naught 2, it is psi 0 0 v psi 0 1. So, psi 0 0 v psi 0 1. All I need to do now is a trivial task is to expand psi 0 1 as I have done here and push it here, correct. So, let us try to do that. Psi 0 1 has an expansion k, so that I must write before. Again, I hope all of you are comfortable in doing these exp expansions. Then I have psi 0 0 v, now I have to write psi 0 1. So, how will you write? You can write these coefficients later and bring this here first because the integration is going to take place with psi k0. This is a number ck1. So, I will first write that psi k0 and complete the integration and simply multiply by this number. Remember, this is just a number. So, I can multiply by this number or I can write the full thing psi k0 v psi 0 0 divided by E0, 0, 0 minus E k 0. It is just that I have written this in a different manner, this first, this later. I have switched it around because that is what, that is immaterial, that is a number. It is a number I can go take it anywhere. And this looks very nice expression, I will just tell you how, why it looks so nice. Because you can see in between there is this psi k 0 psi k 0 sum over k okay note that if this sum over k was complete this by itself would have been an identity operator however it cannot be it written like this because you have ek 0 here so i can't take this out separately and in any case this is k not equal to 0 so don't interpret that as identity operator that's the first thing i want to tell because that will be a mistake because the k is also here. I cannot sum just this, but it will be something which we will do. I think we have done that in 4 to 5 before, if you remember, recall. So, I am just repeating. So, so first to first to note, however, that this quantity is a conjugate of this quantity, right? It is a complex because V is a Hermitian operator. So, if I take complex conjugate of this, the psi k 0 will come on the left v will remain as it is, psi 0 0 will come on the right, okay. So, this is a conjugate of this, which means I can further write this expression as sum over k not equal to 0, psi 0 0 
v psi k 0 mod square divided by t 0 0 minus e k 0. This becomes my e naught 2. Okay, do not forget e naught 1, however, e naught 1 was just psi 0 0 v psi 0 0, right. So, this is my e naught 2 I am doing already. e naught 1 was very simple psi 0 0 v psi 0 0, instead of 1 it was 0. Okay, all of you agree here? I mean, those who have done 4 to 5, this is just a revision, but I think it is worth doing because now we will do the actual Hartree Fock perturbation, but it is worth doing. Note a very important point about this formula. This denominator is always positive because it is mod square. So, it does not matter what is the value of this, this into its complex conjugate is always positive. I hope all of you know any number times its conjugate is always positive, right. So, A into A star it is always positive and the, and the denominator is always negative because this is the lowest eigenstate of H naught, these are the higher eigenstates of H naught, K naught equal to 0, right. And K, of course, if K equal to 0 would have been there, it would have been disaster, okay. This would have been a singular infinity. So, anyway, I have, a, I have removed that, okay. So, now you know why intermediate normalization is required further, okay. So, I have removed it for much simplification. So, it is only K naught equal to 0. So, this quantity for all K, each K is negative right numerator is positive denominator is negative so it is always negative so the entire quantity is always negative it's a very interesting result that we get qualitatively so what we are saying that i have no idea what is first order energy first order correction to the ground state energy is psi 0 0 v psi 0 0 i can't say if it is positive or negative In the context of Hartree Fock perturbation, I had already told that I am least bothered because orbital energy sum plus this was Hartree Fock energy anyway. So, I am not bothered whether this is positive or negative. But the important thing is that after I do the correlation, when I am going to do the correlation, this will be the first correction. I will write what is psi k 0 in terms of determinants later, but regardless of what it is, it is always negative. So, what does it mean? It means when I do a second order MP2 correction, the Hartree Fock energy goes down, which means the energy has improved or it has gone worse, it has improved because originally Hartree Fock was always greater than or equal to E naught. However, there is a question how much negative? It might have gone down. See, I mean, that is a question that we are not bothered. So, E00 plus E01 is of course Hartree Fock energy and that is greater than equal to exact E naught for sure. When I am doing, when I am adding E naught 2, again this I am talking in terms of Hartree Fock perturbation, E naught 2, this is certainly less than or equal to E Hartree Fock. So, you may think that it is going towards E naught which is generally right, but it might be over corrected. You understand what is over correction? So, it may actually go down further. So, if this is E Hartree Fock and this is E naught, then after I correct with E naught 2, it may even go down. It only says it is negative, but there is no upper bound on this that this should be greater than or equal to E naught. There is no upper bound. There is an upper bound, however, on this. I hope you know why now. The reasons are different. This is Hartree Fock energy. So, up to this point, I can write it as a Hamiltonian expectation value with respect to psi 0 0. Because H naught, when I put H naught here, it is E 0 0. When I put V here, it is E naught 1. Add these two, it can be written as a matrix element. It is a Hamiltonian expectation value with respect to some state, psi 0 0. So, that is always greater than or equal to E naught 2, E naught, E naught. But when I am adding E naught 2, I cannot write like this. So, there is no Rayleigh Reed's variation principle. So, this, this result of upper bound I am getting because not because of the perturbation theory, but because of my original Rayleigh Reed's variation method, because this can be written 
as an expectation value of the Hamiltonian. When I do the E naught 2, I have lost that variation method because it is no longer can be written as an expectation value of Hamiltonian because E naught 2 has very complicated terms, it is not expectation value. So, I cannot write this as an expectation value, there is no Rayleigh Ritz principle. I can only say that the E naught 2 is negative, but there is no upper bound theorem. I hope it is clear, so it can go down. The fact that E naught 1 had an upper bound property was not because of any reasons of perturbation because I have no idea of what is E naught 1, positive, negative, but because of the fact that added to this, it generates me a matrix a expectation value of Hamilton and that is always bound because of Rayleigh Reed's principle. So, that is really a variation principle, okay. Let me erase and write down for the formula again. So, this is something that I know, sorry, so I am, I am writing down everything now, where E 0 0 is lower than E 1 0 etcetera. So, they are ordered in this manner, okay, this is for H naught. Then we want to calculate E naught 1. But before I do that, let me write E naught 0, that is trivially psi 0 0, H naught psi 0 0. So, that is the first formula which trivially comes out. Then we write down the ground state first order correction to the energy. So, that is psi 0 0, V psi 0 0, such that E naught 0 plus E naught 1 is psi 0 0 h psi 0 0, which when I do Hartree-Fock perturbation is my Hartree-Fock energy because this is Hartree-Fock, okay, by definition and by Rayleigh Reed's principle, this is greater than or equal to E naught, okay. Then the third formula that we just generated was E naught 2 is psi 0 0 sum over k not equal to 0 psi 0 0 v psi k 0 mod square divided by E 0 0 minus H. And just E naught 2 itself is always negative, just E naught 2 itself. So, it will certainly depress the value from E naught 0 plus E naught 1, but how much I do not know. Normally of course, when I do MP2, I will come to that because I have to analyze what are psi k 0s then. Then we see that it does not go beyond exact energy, but actually recovers about 60 to 6, 7, 70 percent of the entire coordination energy. So, the difference 60 to 70 percent of the difference it actually recovers. So, it does not go beyond, below, it does not actually overcorrect. So, that is a good thing. So, this will eventually become our formula for MP2 and this is the first correction to the correlation energy, all right. Of course, to write MP2, I have to now go back to Hartree-Fock perturbation where H0 is sum of the Fock operator, write them down in terms of determinants that we will do tomorrow and write the final form of the Hartree-Fock perturbation. This is a more general perturbation theory that I have done. I would also mention uh, what I did in the 4 to 5 class that there is something called resolvent. I cannot take this as a projection operator, but there is something called resolvent R naught which is defined as sum over k not equal to 0, psi k 0, psi k 0. So, this is like a projection operator divided by E 0 0 minus E k 0, okay. So, this sum over k everything summed up because k comes only here. If you, if you allow this, if you understand this resolvent, then the entire E naught 2 can be written without the sum over K naught 0, psi 0 0 V R naught V psi 0 0, very simple. Note that our E naught 1 was psi 0 0 V psi 0 0. Now I have written E naught 2 also with psi 0 0 psi 0 0 except that instead of V, 
it has become V R not V. So, in a way you can see the similarity in the E not 1 formula. Obviously, there has to be 2 V because it is second order perturbation. So, that also you should notice that first order I have 1 V, second order I must have 2 V. For the wave function also the same thing, first order correction to the wave function had only 1 V in the numerator. It has 2 V, but they do not come together. The 2 V's are spaced by the resolvent, that is the whole idea, okay. So, essentially what is happening pictorial is the following, that I go from psi 0 0 through the V, I go to one higher state of H naught, then again through V, I come back to psi 0 0, divide by the energy denominator each time. So, if you look at the picture, the picture that I drew E naught 0, E 1 0, etcetera. I, I gave you a picture for psi, psi 0 1, first order correction. Now, I am giving a picture for E naught 2. What you do is that you go from psi, this is psi 0 0, go from psi 0 0 through V to psi 1 0, right. Then come back to psi 0 0 again. If you, if you interpret these, these functions, let us say k equal to 1, what do you do? Psi 0 0 V psi, psi 1 0 back to psi 0 0. So, you are going to psi 1 0, come back to psi 0 0, each time you do that take energy denominator. Then you do the next one, go here, come back here, take the energy denominator. So, this is the pictorial way of looking at it, while going here there is a matrix element, while coming back there is a matrix element, matrix element is just the complex conjugate when I come back, it is like a scattering process. So, I go here come back here and each time I take energy denominator, keep doing for all states. So, this is the way to remember. So, each time you go, there is a matrix element. Each time you come back, there is a matrix element. So, you are always going from psi 0 0, coming back to psi 0 0. When you do E naught 1, you did not do anything like going back. You started from psi 0 0, immediately was in psi 0 0 with V. So, basically, if I write E naught 1 in the same process, all these were not required. I started from here and come back to here without going anywhere. Here I am going up and then coming, it is a ladder. I am going up and coming back. But eventually of course, for all E0, you have to start from psi 0 0 and come back to psi 0 0, remember that is important. When I did psi 0 1, I told you it is a combination of various states, that is for psi 0 1. But if I put that in E0 2, remember this is a combination. But this combination is such that when I expand this, I come back to psi 0 0. So, that is exactly what is happening because each of the coefficients has this number. So, eventually I start from here, come back to one of the psi k 0 and back to psi 0 0. So, all energy correction, in fact, when I do E naught 3, E naught 4, everything will have the same structure. I, we will not do that, but it will become more and more complicated because I have only one, two scattering here. Quite clearly you can see if I have third order energy, there has to be three scattering. How to do that? You may wonder how to do that. I will show you one process because I am not going to do third order correction. How do I do three? Tell me. I go from one to here, then I will go from here to here. There is another V, then come back straight. Because I have odd number now. In fact, that will be reflected in my expression. So, all these expressions are much easily understood by diagrams. In fact, I am not immediately going to diagrammatic picture, but I just want to convince you that what Feynman said, the diagrams are extremely good pictorial representations of the algebra. The algebra is actually in unnecessarily you get lost. Diagrams are very easy. If I tell you this diagram, you will be actually able to write the matrix element. The first one will be psi 1 0 v psi 1 psi 0 0 multiplied by psi 2 0 0 v psi, psi 1 0, then psi 2 0 back to psi 0 0 or psi 0 0 v psi 2 0. I am coming back because there has to be only 3 for E naught 3. So, actually all such processes together will give you a contribution to E naught 2, E naught 3, E naught 4. So, pictorially the uh, diagrammatically the uh, perturbation theory can be very nicely understood. In fact, all these things that are done will be actually converted to diagrammatics and that became what is called diagrammatic perturbation theory or MBPT, many body perturbation theory. We will, we will not do too much about it, but I want to convince you that actually diagrams are much more easy way to pictorially fathom 
what is happening in the perturbation theory and understand the process, okay. Uh, if you understand that eventually for all energy, I have to start from here and come back here by the scattering process and that is exactly what has happened. Through the resolvent, I have a much easier way of writing. I do not have to write the denominator, the denominator is involved in the resolvent. Resolvent has, resolvent does not have a property of projection operator, I am again repeating. So, you may wonder what are the properties of resolvent, so we will discuss that. If we do R naught square, what will happen and so on, yeah. We can discuss those questions and some of these we discussed in the previous class. So, that is an ind independently, it is a good algebra, alright. I think today I will stop here and now actually put H naught as some of the Fock operator and find out what are the psi k zeros, what will be the psi k zeros and then calculate this. When I do this, I will require the final Slater rule that I told you. That is the matrix element of psi 0, 0, Hartree Fock with doubly excited determinant. That will, that will come in. So, tomorrow's class I will start with that. I will start with that final Slater rule. Again, like the first two Slater rules, I will only simply write the expression. We will understand the expression and then go back to this and try to complete it.